Hello, my name's Matt and welcome to this video about my homemade computer case Mark II. And uh, this is actually a sequel to a computer case I made a while ago out of wood. And the ideas I thought of there, well some of them anyway, have been transferred to this but done a bit better. So um, the main goal was again to make a almost inaudible computer. So no matter what the computer was doing, whether it was playing games or video editing or even word processing, you know, that's a really demanding task. <laughs> um, well, the goal was basically for it to be completely inaudible, no matter how quiet the room is. And to do this, I've actually uh, reconfigured a standard layout. Um, so it's quite a bit different than a standard case. And because that's sort of like the main feature here, I think we'll have a look inside first. So if we uh, just turn it round, and take this side panel off, which is usually held in by three screws. Uh, you can see that it is indeed quite a bit different than a standard case. Now, this is sort of like more function over form because this really isn't supposed to be seen unless you need to upgrade it or something like that. Um, so, I mean, there are a lot of other cases that are way better out there um, in terms of internal looks. Uh, but as I said, this is more function over form. So the first thing you'll notice is that the motherboard is mounted vertically and this is to allow the case to have a vertical airflow design. So basically the air gets taken in at the bottom here through these dust filters and just goes through the heat sinks uh, vertically and then out of the top. Now this goes along with convection because obviously heat rises. So what it means is that fans don't have to turn as fast to move the same amount of air. Now, usually there are plastic barriers which direct the air through the heat sinks, but they were removed for most of the shots in this video as to not be in the way. Also, you may notice that there's quite a large gap between the fans and the heat sinks. This was done so that the fans could remove not only the heat from the heat sinks, but also the surrounding components as well. Now, because the motherboard is mounted vertically, all of its ports can be accessed through a hatch on the top of the case and all of the cables can go through a hole at the back. And this is actually more practical than having the ports on the back because it means you don't have to pull the computer out if you want to plug something in. Another thing you may have noticed is that the graphics card has a colossal CPU cooler on it rather than a standard graphics card cooler. And the reason why it's there is to allow the graphics card to be quieter even if it's maxed out playing an intensive game. There are a few reasons why this makes it quieter. The first is that obviously because this is a much bigger cooler, it has a larger surface area, which means it can transfer heat to the air more effectively. And another thing is that obviously because the air path is vertical, all the heat from the card gets vented immediately outside the case, rather than just being left inside like a normal graphics card cooler usually does. For example, this is the original cooler, and as you can see, not only is it smaller, but it's designed just to basically blow the heat off itself, rather than exhaust it out of the case like the new cooler does. Now the third reason this cooler helps with noise levels is that it allows a much bigger fan to be used with the graphics card. For example, this is a 140 millimeter fan, which is the same size as what I've actually used in here, and uh, it's significantly bigger than the original cooler's fan. And this means that the bigger fan doesn't have to spin as fast to move the same amount of air. So it means that um, the whole thing is overall a lot quieter. So I think this thing is pretty much redundant now. Oh my goodness, I hit the mirror. Oh. What do you mean this is Were you paying attention? No. <laughs> oh man. She caught it, that's good. Now, as the cooler sticks out a lot, some of you might be thinking that it might stress the card's PCB, but I'd just like to point out that it is mounted extremely securely, and uh, all of the RAM and voltage regulators have their own heat sinks on, and they're obviously in the airflow path as well. So it's all kept within spec. I personally think there should be a new standard for computer cases, or at least gaming cases, to allow big coolers on graphics cards like this, because a lot of the time graphics cards actually use twice as much power as processors do, but their heat sinks are restricted to only 
two PCI Express slots, and the airflow is obviously not exactly direct out of the case, like as usual with processors. So I do hope that eventually there'll be a nice new standard where graphics cards can have a better airflow path and uh, can have bigger coolers because they're just so powerful and hot and noisy sometimes and it would be quite good if that was all history just like it was with processors when these big coolers became the norm. <sighs> so, <laughs> another thing you might have noticed is that there is some weird green luminous stuff inside here and you're probably thinking what on earth is that doing inside a computer case? Well, what it is, is folded fabric. And the reason it's there is to provide a soft mount for the two fans. So this means that the vibrations from the fans don't get transferred into the case, getting amplified in the process. This is something I covered in my how to make a graphics card quieter video, and it does have a significant effect on the overall noise levels. Now, another thing this fabric does is absorb any high frequency sounds that might be emitted from the graphics card or power supply, like coil wine. And it does a really good job of that because it just absorbs it and prevents it from being bounced elsewhere. These components actually don't have that much wine to them, but they do have a little. And that little coil wine is actually louder than the fans. So it is important that this noise is absorbed so that you can't hear it, because when it's not being masked by fan noise, it can be quite annoying. Uh, the hard drives are here at the back, and again, the data drive, which is a 2.5 inch laptop hard drive, is in a pocket made out of this same fabric, and that's exactly for the exact same reasons of absorbing its noise and vibrations. Now, the power supply is mounted here beneath the motherboard, and as you can see, it's been taken out of its case. And the reason for that is to get rid of a fan, because now it's being cooled by the CPU's fan. So it's cooling both the processor and the power supply. And this works really well, because in this configuration, the air can flow smoothly over the power supply without any obstruction, really. Whereas on a typical power supply, the air has to go at 90 degrees, which does mean that the fan has to turn quite a bit faster to move the same amount of airflow. So uh, it does mean that it is quite a bit cooler this way. Now, before any of you say that having this fabric near a power supply is a fire hazard, I'll just say that because of the way the power supply has been fitted, all of the high voltage electronics are isolated and within their own little enclosure. You can't see it here, but there is an enclosure around the power plug, for example, and everything high voltage has been kept well away from this fabric. So it is very safe, even if there was a direct short, because obviously the uh, power supply would just switch off and uh, you know, a fire is extremely unlikely. So yeah, please don't comment on how my computer is going to catch fire and burn my house down, because it's not going to happen. All right, so... Uh... <laughs> okay, so um, I think we'll look at the back now. As you can see, this is the input for the power supply, and uh, there are two more USB 2 ports for something like a printer or whatever you want to plug in at the back, and two DC sockets. And uh, these DC sockets are connected to the power supply's 12 and 5 volt rails and basically allow you to plug in some extra devices that you want to be powered by the computer. Um, here you can see that there is some more of that fabric on the bottom and we've got the same thing at the top as well. So you might be wondering why not go with water cooling instead of making a new case like this? Well, essentially, the keyword for this case is experimentation. I just wanted to try out a few ideas I had. And another thing is that water cooling is actually quite expensive. For example, this whole case, excluding my time, was built for less than a basic water cooling kit. So it was sort of economical for me to do it this way as well. And uh, water cooling isn't necessarily quieter than air because you've got things like pumps to contend with. And essentially, all it is is a better way of taking heat away from components and uh, cooling it down with a better airflow path, typically. Whereas, because I've built this from scratch, it by default has a better airflow path. So it makes it sort of unnecessary to go with water cooling. And it means that you don't have to maintain it either. Now, you can't see it because it's covered by this white plastic, 
um, but there is another hard drive inside here it's a desktop drive and it's used for backup purposes and I'll uh, cover that in just a second so I think it's time to turn it on so as you can see this plexiglass light at the front looks really cool as does the power button and the whole thing has been finished with a lovely carbon fiber wrap which is why it has this nice texture to it despite the whole thing being made out of aluminium and it's actually this combination of lights and vinyl wrap that it's been called cloud unit as it looks sort of droidish when it's on so on the top we've got a vertical loading optical drive which is essentially just a laptop optical drive and I've got two USB 2 ports, one USB 3 port, a USB 3 card reader and a button. Now this button does something quite special in that when it's pressed the front power light turns red and inside that additional hard drive I told you about behind the white plastic gets connected to the power supply so it turns on and then the system automatically begins backing up the data from the laptop drive which is the data drive um, to the backup hard drive so it's basically like a really easy backup system so you're more likely to keep regular backups of your data which is obviously usually the most valuable thing on a computer so I think that's pretty much it. Thanks very much for watching this video. And if you've liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, in the next video, I'll be doing a build log of this thing. So I'll be showing you how I went about building it and things like that. After the build log, I'll be doing a performance test. So I'll be showing you basically how quiet this thing really is and what kind of temperatures it gets as well. So I'm Matt, uh, thanks again for watching. And I hope I see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. And uh, despite it running the benchmark, you know,